We're just going to take a uh, quick look at the uh, the prelude now, and the prelude is the uh, you know everything that is uh, imported into Rust. Uh, you know things like string. Um, you know we don't have to say standard string string. Um, we just say string because it's uh, it's part of the prelude. And if you look at the uh, it's right here. So standard uh, prelude, and then it um, it tells you all the uh, all the things it has. And uh, because you know we've been using them for so long, uh, you probably recognize almost all of this. Uh, copy send size sync unpin uh this pinning has to do with like keeping memory from from moving uh, but uh everything else we recognize uh drop you know uh is dropping uh dropping something uh you know basically moving into a function and then calling its uh destructor so you can free up the memory um box we've used to own we use that to make uh to make cows uh clone uh partial ord uh into you know, iterator default option, everything inside, of course, gets brought in string to string, vec, uh, all that stuff. Um, so that is, um, you know, part of the preload. Now, what if you don't want to use it? There's actually, uh, there's a way to uh, to get rid of it. Uh, and that's just uh, an annotation. And it's quite easy. You just say no implicit preload. And then now uh, all the things that we uh, that we usually use are, are not going to work anymore. So my vec equals uh, vec. You know this is not going to work. Uh, a string is not going to work. Uh, string string from yeah, some nothing in there. And then uh, printing it out. Uh, that's not going to work. Well, let's just uh, let's just create these and uh, see what it says now that the prelude's gone. And there you go. So cannot find uh, macro vec, so consider importing that. So use standard vec. What else does it need? Uh, consider importing this. So you can see you can uh, import them all one by one uh, if you do that. If you decide you uh, you don't want the uh, oh that's right. And also std itself is uh, this is called. Uh, You'll remember this uh, extern uh, keyword I told you about, which is where if you take in some some external code, uh, an external crate, uh, it used to say extern crate uh, something something, and uh, you would need to do that to bring it into scope first. But now uh, uh, Rust just looks at the uh, the uh, cargo uh, tomo file and uh, it's able to figure it out itself. But uh, here. Uh, we actually have to bring in uh, std as a crate first, and then uh, and then inside of that you uh, you go into uh, you know use this and use that, and of course we didn't bring in from, so you can see just how how reliant we are on the uh, on the prelude because uh, everything all these simple things we're trying to do uh, they're not working, and then finally they work. And uh, I don't even think print line is uh, is going to work either uh, because uh, that is a macro. So let's uh, let's see my vec my string. So I think we're going to have to import this as well just to uh, just to print out what we've got. There you go. Cannot find macro. So please consider importing. All right. So uh, use standard print line and then I think we're we are good there you go so it finally finally worked um, and the next uh, of course this is just uh, taking out the prelude but uh, the next step if you if you really need to get into uh, um, you know bringing in none of this because you have an embedded device uh, you know just, just a tiny like a you know Raspberry Pi or something like that um, then you uh, this embedded rest book is, is where you want to go and then it tells you you know what happens how do you do it it um, you just use this this no no std so no standard uh, um, no standard library and then uh, and then you can start with uh, with just this and you can see you know here's the difference between the two um, you know, you have heap collections, stack overflow protection, blah, blah, blah. Um, so SCD is good for all that. But then if you're doing 
you know, firmware bootloader code, uh, that's not going to work because uh, um, it's assuming you're already running an operating system. Um, and, you know, no, no STD is about starting to use the code, you know, even before the operating system starts up. So, uh, you know, it works for that. And then uh, you can, uh, depending if you have this, uh, you can use this crate to get, uh, you know, uh, heap, uh, heap memory, but uh, usually you won't, and you'll just be using stirs. So actually, if we, uh, if we took out, uh, took out string, this would actually, uh, this would actually still work because, uh, because it's not, uh, there's no heap uh, allocation going on. And um, that, uh, that's okay, uh, even without, uh, uh, without uh, the the standard library, because that's just you know um, just like like bytes uh, in the in the binary itself, and uh, it can access that. So that is uh, those are two um, two interesting things to know uh, the you know the prelude and uh, just how much uh, work it does for us, and that if you want to get into uh, embedded code, you start out with uh, with this uh, on the top, and then. Uh, and then you read this whole book and um, you know rest is really good for uh, for embedded code as well so uh, if that is your thing then this is the uh, the book you want to uh, you want to read